Hi, I'm Mrs. Dean Math. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to go over properties of reflections in 8th grade math. A transformation is a function of a figure that changes position, size, or shape. A reflection is a transformation that flips across a line of reflection. So here we have a graph with a quadrilateral. This is our pre-image. And so any sort of transformation is going to take that pre-image move it according to the transformation, and then you have a new image. In this case, we're going to reflect this image, and we're gonna reflect it two different ways. Typically, your reflection is gonna be across the y-axis or the x-axis. So let's go ahead and reflect this across the x-axis first. And in order to reflect something over a line, we wanna find our line of reflection. So in this case, it's gonna be our x-axis, and we want to put each point on the opposite side of that x-axis. So if I start with the C, since it's closest to the x, I'm gonna count down two to the x, and then I'm gonna go two more to the other side, and there is my C image. Then I can do the same thing with my D. It's going down one, two, three, four, five. So on the other side, I'm going to put it five away from my x. My B is six from the X, so I'm gonna go six in the opposite direction. And then my A is nine away, so I'm gonna stay right here on the same X value, and I'm gonna go down nine. So now my new image has reflected over the X axis, and my A, B, C, D image is flipped. If you think about looking at your reflection in the mirror, if you were to hold your hand up and touch your right ear in the mirror, it looks like your left side. So your image is always gonna be flipped. And we can see that here, that everything has just been flipped over that x-axis. So now we're going to find our reflection on the y-axis. So this time, as I'm going over the y-axis, I'm gonna count in the direction to go the other way across the Y. So my Y value is gonna stay the same, it's just how far am I going. In this case, the B, we'll start with the B, goes one place over, so there's my B image. My A is three places, so I'm gonna count three the other side. Then my D is the farthest, this one looks like it's nine, so I'm gonna go nine across the other way, make sure you stay on the same line. And then C is five away, so I'm gonna go over here at the five. I'm going to connect these. So now we can see that our image in the green is reflecting across the Y axis, so again, from the B, if you look here in the center, it's like reflecting in the mirror. It looks like it's the opposite. It's flipped, but it's still the same shape. So then we want to see what do you notice about the ordered pairs when we cross the y-axis and the x-axis. So let's look first over here at the original. And I'm just gonna pick one point. So we'll go with the point A here. And if I graph this point A, this is at three, nine. Then if I go down here to my other A in the red, this A is at three, negative nine. And then if I go in the green to the other A, my ordered pair here is at negative three, nine. So let's look first at the Y axis. What do you notice about the ones that flipped over the Y axis? So that's our three, nine in black and our green for the image. And if you notice, the Y axis flip, my Y stayed the same, but my X is the opposite. So X is opposite, Y is equal. Then we're gonna look down here from our original A, three nine in the black, to our red A, three negative nine. As I went across the X axis, my X is equal and my Y is opposite. So you can see here that it's pretty easy to tell what's changing and what's not just by the ordered pairs, but you can also go back and count the distance like we did. To reflect the figure, we had each point flip or be the same distance opposite the line of reflection, and then we connected the new vertices. So at first we used the X axis as our line of reflection, and then the second time we used the Y axis. So a reflection could have 
overlapping points. So let's look at what happens when we label these points and then we're gonna move them on the graph according to our reflection. First I have a triangle DEF, so D is at five, two, E is at negative five, negative three, and F is at seven, negative six. So now I've formed my triangle here. I've connected the points. It wants me to reflect the points across the X axis. So I'm gonna reflect each of the points across the X. So the D, we'll start with the D. The D is two from X, and so I'm gonna go the other direction down. The E is three from X, but this time I'm gonna go up three for my E. And then the F is six from X, so I'm gonna go up again in the opposite direction for my F. So now I have my triangle reflected across the X axis. And since the triangle itself went across the X axis, it ended up the reflection is actually overlapping with the original shape. So let me go ahead and label these new points so that we can see what happens from the original to the new. So the new D is at five, negative two. The E is at negative five, three. And the F is at seven, six. So again, we can see here, let's look at the D. It's now at five, negative two. It started at five, two. So the X stayed the same and the Y is the opposite because we were reflecting across the X axis. If you look at all three of them, same thing. X stayed the same, the Y is the opposite for E and for F, my seven stayed the same for my X and the six is the opposite for Y. So did the size of the triangle change? And in this case, no, the size of the image did not change it has just flipped to a new position on the graph according to the line of reflection, whether that's the x-axis or the y-axis. And we looked at both of those options. Thanks for joining me today for Properties of Reflections in 8th Grade Math. There are several other videos that go with all the transformations. You can find those linked below. I'm Mrs. D. Math. Have a great day. Bye.